Good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Burke. I am the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. I'm going to open the meeting. This is the Wednesday, October 18th, 2017, 6.30 meeting of the Board of Selectmen here at the Lakeville Senior Center. Is anyone else taping the meeting other than Lake Cam? Okay, so on our agenda tonight, our first order of business is to meet with the South Coast Rail Team for an update on their Phase 1 analysis of station stops, including a new station in Middleborough. So, Gene, I, I want to thank you for coming and bringing your team. I did. Uh, it looks like you have a lot of great information to share with us, and I think that this is, will be helpful for us to understand what what the plans are and what's proposed for, for the area. Well, thank you, Aaron. I, I'd like to introduce my team very quickly because I have some great folks with me today. I have Rick Carey from VHB, who's going to help me with the presentation. I have Ken Caputo from VHB. Many of you have met Rick Colon, who is the Director of Community Affairs. Government what, what is it? Government Public That Affairs. one. <laughs> Nancy Farrell from Regina Villa. And then I have two of uh, my MBTA <coughs> colleagues. I have Carol Ann McCarran and I have Jamie Rush. Did I miss anybody from my great team? No, and also I'd like to recognize Senator Rodericks and Representative Keiko Oral. Um, so with that said, yes, um, our goal tonight is to provide an update for you on the South Coast Rail, um, where we are in a now phased project. And this is what I propose to present to you this evening. What we've been doing recently, a sort of overall summary, what our operations look like, the infrastructure as it pertains to the town of Lakeville per se, our community engagement efforts, and then we'll open it up for discussion once we get through the presentation, which is pretty brief. So on May, uh, excuse me, on March 15th, we did file a notice of project change. That allowed us to begin examining a phased approach to South Coast Rail. What happened is we found out after an independent cost estimate that the timeline on the preferred route had extended out to at least 2030, and the bottom line on the preferred route had escalated from 2.3 to 3.4 billion dollars. We were then directed to see if we could look at something that we could get going faster and for a lot less money, hence the phasing. So it's not segmenting, it's phasing. Um, we've also done a lot of data collection. I know people have probably seen <laughs> on, on the right of way uh, looking at uh, station sites and things like that. We are developing a supplemental environmental impact report for, per MEPA requirements. Um, and we have conducted for that uh, an alternatives analysis. We're also evaluating environmental impacts on all the new pieces to this because the phased approach now, I'll just briefly look at that map over there. By phasing, this orange is phase one. Where's, where's Vanna White? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, man, do you think? So the orange is phase one. So it's the southern triangle that's always been part of the project. Then it goes to the Middleborough Secondary, which is a freight, seven and a half mile freight line right now, and then it connects to what you know as the Middleborough Lakeville line. Um, so that is, we have to do anything that's new that we didn't do in our preferred alternative, we have to study again. So that's that whole section. Uh, so we're advancing design and we uh, started the environmental permitting process and we have begun a pretty ambitious outreach uh, project or effort. Um, back in September, we had six public meetings throughout Southeastern Mass where we presented uh, the updated information on the preferred route with the timeline and the bottom line. We also mentioned that the notice of project change would happen. We uh, also had, during the notice of project change, two comment periods and conducted two meetings, one in April in Dartmouth and then in Taunton in May. Um, we have briefed SERPED on this a couple of times as well, and we've had a number of individual community meetings, and there will be many more to come. Um, so the summary of phase one is to construct the Southern Triangle that we discussed before, to upgrade the Middleborough secondary line to commuter rail standards, and that includes signals, and um, to put a new station in Middleborough, about eight tenths of a mile north, um, at Pilgrim Junction, right there. That's much clearer. Um, meanwhile, the five-year CIP does contain funding to continue the design on the preferred alternative. Um, so we're still doing that. Um, 
Then the preferred alternative, which includes this station, includes these two lines. This is the Fall River Secondary. This is the New Bedford Main Line. Um, it optimizes our operations, so we did a lot of studying about how this is all going to fit in with the existing service and how we can serve these two cities uh, of Fall River and New Bedford as well as Taunton, um, get them up to Boston. These are the times that we estimate it will take based on our current operations analysis. So 91 minutes is estimated from Fall River and New Bedford, but anyone who drives to Boston from Fall River and New Bedford knows that's very good. Um, 83 from the Freetown Station, 71 from Taunton, and then it's typically about an hour for you folks when you get on in Lakeville to get up to South Station. We're, we are adding a couple of peak period trips, um, and we're also adding uh, coaches to existing train sets that come out of the Lakeville Station, as well as uh, new bi-level coaches, somewhere like 14 to 16 bi-level coaches, yeah. So we can accommodate the extra capacity, the added ridership by expanding the train sets and adding to bi-level coaches. Um, we have found that this, we are looking for the least environmental impact, and in fact have found that our environmental impacts have been reduced substantially uh, because of some work we've done looking at our track section. We have a design exception now that allows us to do a lot less earth moving and therefore fewer impacts. Um, we have as a goal to maximize the one seat ride for the majority of existing and new riders. Um, the existing station in Lakeville remains open for Cape Flyer and it supports the, Cape, the future Cape service. So part of our uh, notice of project change <coughs> did ask that we at least look at um, the Cape shuttle service, so daily service. Here's what we are projecting and this could change. Um, you have already 24 trains a day coming out of Lakeville. We're looking at 26 total, so you've got uh, out of New Bedford and Fall River morning and evening, you have three trains each way, and then uh, Taunton and Middleborough gets both because they're, both trains will stop, both legs will stop in Taunton um, for a total of six morning peak and six evening peak. Um, again, this could change a little bit, but it, that's what the operations analysis looks like so far. And in Lakeville, these are the upgrades we're proposing. I'm going to hand this over to Rick. Um, these are the bridges, the grade crossings, and the five miles of track. Mm -hmm. That one. Okay, thanks. That's Gene. Yeah. Uh, that's such a so just to what? go over, um, focused in on the limits of Lakeville, and there are two um, track segments that are in uh, the town and that Board of Kenny's putting up is a little bit more clear, but um, there's the portion of the right of way for this first phase that is on the middle bar secondary that's within the limits of Lakeville, and then there's a portion of the uh, New Bedford main line that goes through Lakeville too. So there's two pieces, and within those um, limits, there's two railroad bridges that need to be reconstructed. That would be the Cedar Swamp Bridge and the Asana River Bridge. Uh, there's also three grade crossings that would be reconstructed and upgraded. That's uh, Malbone Street, which is on the New Bedford Second uh, um, Main Line, and then two grade crossings on the Middle Borough Secondary. That's uh, North Precinct Street and Leonard Street. So. Um, those would be the upgrades, and then uh, a little more than five miles of track upgrades, and track upgrades would include um, ties, rail, um, improved track drainage, um, and a uh, reduced, um, uh, modified typical section, so we've been able to minimize the amount of earthworks. On the middle bar of secondary, just to point out, um, the existing rail is actually in very good shape. It's continuously welded rail. So the improvements on that line basically are um, additional tire replacements and new stone ballast just to uh, improve drainage and the, uh, and the track structure itself for commuter rail uh, standards. So uh, we'll get more specific into the station. I know that is a... Uh, uh, Can that map is on the screen? We're going to get a new Anna White. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, the map, and uh, maybe a little bit more clear here, shows the existing Middleborough Lakeville Station. Um, 
and um, the new uh, station that um, we're proposing, which is in, that's, this is Pilgrim Junction, which is at the junction, which is um, a location that is better suited for needing the extension to New Bedford and Fall Worker and trying to mimic the operation that exists at the existing station today, moving it up that three quarters of a mile into the junction. So, um, and there were uh, many operational challenges with trying to leave the station in its current location of having trains from New Bedford and Royal Fall River come to the junction, head south to the station, and either transfer passengers or to do a reverse move back north, which is a, a time penalty based on FRA regulations when you reverse a train. There's a testing and um, operational things that the engineers need to do that actually cause about a 15 minute delay if you were to reverse um, move. So that's where we landed with a station that allowed a one seat ride for the majority of um, passengers existing and new passengers from New Bedford and Fall River. Um, didn't require any special reverse moves from an operational standpoint and you know optimally trying to get it a station as close to the existing station as possible. Um, so I, I have two slides that kind of will go through some of the statistics of the existing station the way we've seen it and um, the new station and uh, you know certainly uh, when we're done with the presentation any questions on these we can go through uh, specifically but the existing station uh, behind the apartments has 769 parking spaces um, the um, one of the more recent ridership um, Study showed there's about 886 riders, so obviously some of those, most of those riders are parking there, some of them are kiss and ride or, or transit drop-offs, and some of them are walk-ups as well. Um, we've done some recent counts at the station to get a sense of how many people walk from the development to the train, uh, to the platform station, and we did a count in the morning peak period only, but we did one in May of 2017 and we did one last month in September and the numbers were around 15 to 20 um, walk up from the apartments. We had someone stationed so they could see where they were coming from. So um, those are the numbers we found on those two instances when we did the counts. Uh, what Gene said before, there's 12 inbound trains, 12 outbound trains today for a total of 24 trains servicing that station. Five of those trains are in the morning peak hours uh, five of them are in the evening peak hours. Um, the station also serves the Cape Flyer service that operates in the summer months, and um, and the TOD uh, we know has um, 40s um, funding eligibility um, when that was first constructed. So, uh, so the new station in Pilgrim Junction um, would provide access um, right off of Route 105, and we've situated a driveway that would be just opposite the 495 ramp. Uh, in that signalized location, it would utilize a, a portion of the, the uh, closed down Chase Chevrolet site and cross um, a tracks where there's an ex existing crossing and basically utilize the uh, disturbed area that's now the, uh, the rail yard functions and layover facility that the MBK uses. It doesn't impact any of the tracks for the layover facility, but some of the property in between. Um, it's a total of 501 spaces. We have an estimated ridership of about 670 riders that would utilize the station. The reason why that number is lower than what currently uses the existing Middle Bar Lakeville station is some of the riders from that station will be diverted down to the new stations down in New Bedford and Fall River. So that's uh, the estimate. Um, we're also looking at providing a um, a bus shuttle or van shuttle from the existing TOD development to the station so they would still provide that access from the development to the station. Um, we've been looking very closely at the operations here and we're able to add in two additional uh, trains um, which would go from 24 today to 26 total um, and instead of five in the morning it would be six peak in the morning, six peak in the evening uh, to improve um, service options for um, for passengers and this station could also serve a future uh, full-time commuter rail service from the Cape um, providing a second platform that those passengers could do a cross-platform transfer from uh, from the Cape onto this mainline service um, and then 
we're going to have okay. Jean pop up and we'll talk about community engagement. Thanks. So thank you. So um, what we've been doing, we'll continue to do, is meet with um, local conservation commissions. We go into the communities before we actually file. We go through what's in the notice of intent, see if there are any questions we can answer before the, the, the formal process has been very helpful. We've done it in four communities so far. We'll continue to do that. We've already had a couple of hearings. Um, and we are also working very hard to set up a phase one project working group. So those of you who remember the old task force will know that was a group of people from all the communities that were involved. So there were 31 communities in the Stoughton Electric uh, group that, that we invited to the table. But each community, each municipality picked a couple of representatives to serve on the task force. Well, this will be similar, but it will be reflective of the phase one service. So hopefully we'll have that set up pretty soon. And then also, once we file our uh, draft supplemental environmental impact report in early 2008, there'll be comment period and we're going to set up some meetings. We haven't done the logistics on that yet, but there will be public meetings on that. And we're going to continue our ongoing meetings with uh, all the communities in the phase one area in particular. Um, and certainly, we make ourselves available whenever there's a need, and we'll continue to do that. Um, so basically, our summary, and that is an icon with a pen on it. Nobody seemed to know what that was. <laughs> Your 40S funding remains intact. The shuttle for the TOD riders, again, 15 to 20, is what we had on two counts that we did during periods when kids are in school, people are going to work, so we didn't do it over the summer break. We do have the existing station for the Cape Flyer. That's the seasonal weekend service. Um, we offer additional peak period trips. We're definitely going to see a vehicle trip reduction, so greenhouse gases should be improved. The new bi-level coaches will be in place to increase the seating capacity. And then it gives people also the chance to go south, um, which is a lot of people don't think of that. We think of everything as coming from here and heading north. But there are people who would like to go south as well sometimes. Because um, believe it or not, there's some pretty nice things south of here. Um, so with that, we're, the team is here to answer questions. Um, anything you have, go ahead. I want the coffee right next to you. Just there. Do you want to start? I said, sure. So you, well, the, you, you've done a good job in saying the, the, the number of trains, so you can always re-verify my math, but we currently have almost 8,000 stops in Lakeville going in and out of town. And uh, if that got reduced to just the Cape Flyer, I have that at 104. So if, if we talk about do we maintain a, a we'll call it a parking lot, and do we maintain that station for just 104 current people that are in front of us, I would suggest that we don't do that. Um, if you're going to spend $24 million in Middleborough, which is fine, I'm not opposing, some, some people might oppose it, I'm not opposing that I go to Middleborough. What I, what I do oppose is that, aside from 13 weekends, during the summer, that becomes an empty parking lot, which as I talked to the chief of police, if you go by McDonald's today, you have all the trailer trucks parked. Well, it doesn't take much time on, on social media to find out that there's a significant empty parking lot in Lakeville. And you will have every kind of illegal activity going on there and certainly the police chief, not speaking for him, he'll be in the, the groups later on as, as you begin to meet the people. Uh, that's a significant concern of ours. That is when the hospital site got abandoned, uh, it has 24-hour security. Uh, police security is $500,000. Less than police security, that is, uh, private people are a third to maybe a half, however it is is done. So I see it as a 
unused parking lot. I get that we want to say it's for the Cape Cod Flyer, but 104 mm -hmm. stops versus 7,760 stops don't keep it open for the Cape Cod Flyer. I get that we would hopefully open Wareham, Bourne, etc. Yeah. I've always been a proponent of that. Mm -hmm. But you'll have a beautiful Middleborough stop. Mm -hmm. So uh, part of my question would be is why would we do a shuttle for how many people? But the security particularly bothers bothers me in particular, and we somewhat <coughs> demanded it with the hospital site. Uh, part of my proposal is that as we move forward, abandon the parking lot. That is, revert the land back to 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 Lakeville. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be happy to put it back on the tax rolls, and I'm sure we could find a developer to develop that land. Uh, we're not that interested in buying it, if you will, other than for the, <laughs> other than for the Togan dollar. Uh, but we would like to get it back in the tax rolls. And part of my proposal would be is we take the proceeds from the sale, immediately put 60% of it back into the schools with capital improvements at Assawampsit and 40% for road improvements. So if I want to say or insinuate that it's Department of Transportation, uh, let's let's put it right back in the roads, so we all see a little bit of a of a benefit to that. Uh, we certainly would get into what we're doing from a uh, overlay district, not necessarily related to the train station. However, when we met the attorneys and. and um, I know Aaron and Mitzi will speak to it. Um, we would do an overlay district for our suggestions to do an overlay district for all of the empty lots within the cul-de-sac area of the train station that you see today, uh, the train station and potentially the, the hospital site, uh, so that we would get further reimbursements for, from the state. That is, if you're going to do a 40B, a 40R potentially is better. We call it a, a friendly development with a check from the state. Uh, that's kind of an oversimplification. But I do consider it to be abandoning the parking lot. However we want to spin that, almost 8,000 runs to 100 runs, maybe the potential goes from 100 to 300. Who cares? It's eight-tenths of a mile up the road. Move the whole thing there. Yep. So okay. that that's kind of where I would start out the general conversation. That is. I would be a proponent of, of getting the land and putting it to the taxpayer's use and take those proceeds and, and plow 60% back in schools and 40% back in our roads. I would support that. I'm not saying the voters are going <laughs> to support it, but I would support that. Um, you know, it's interesting because I mentioned to the team that you know, there would be security concerns. I completely understand that. And so that's something we still need to vet with everybody at the T. Um, I'd be worried about that too. Um, how, would, how would we protect it? How would we keep it clean? How would, you know, what, what level of effort would be required? <coughs> the, police are, the police are happy at $511,000 is the 24-hour security. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. So, but that, you know what, we'll take that back with us. Um, happy to do that. Do uh, you have anything to add, Rick, on that? No, I don't. I think uh, it's definitely a suggestion we can look at. And um, the, you're right, the use of the existing station would be in those short months. So, um, and the, the new station would provide a, a similar, if not expanded, functionality. It would, uh, it would serve the uh, new CAPE service. It would not easily, um, based on its configuration, be a stop for the Cape Flyer coming from South Station right. in the summer months, but there's other stations north that would Good. serve that purpose for sure. That's so, right. Yeah. Right. Is the, is the five, just one last one for now, does the 500 spaces, new spaces, is that limited based on space or that's what you predict you need for spaces? <laughs> Actually, it's, um, it's slightly more than we, than what we predicted. Estimated. Yeah, we okay. estimated okay. 470 parking rides. So we put okay. a little cushion yeah. in? And we also know, as Rick mentioned earlier, that a lot of the riders that currently use the Lakeville station 
will get on at earlier stops. Yeah. But we have planned. Yeah. If yeah. we need to, we yeah. can expand. Pe more. People are very creatures of habit. That is, the people sure. that are on Bailey Road and things, which we can say is New Bedford, really don't mind the 15-minute ride up the road to Lakeville, and the creatures of habit. So, yeah. don't. If if I want to not mothball. If I would like you to sell the, the, the parking lot to Lakeville, uh, I, I don't want you to have too few spaces in Middleborough. Yeah. Say, oh, right. well, now we need to keep it open. No. We're yeah, going to park yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, cars. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. 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 That, that's the beginning of it. So yeah. I'll turn yeah. it over to my other selectman. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say that I echo a lot of what John has to say. Um, you know, with your presentation, you talk about expanding future service down south as yeah. well as part of the Middleborough station option. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I question the need to keep the station open and hope that it's not to try to appease the town of Lakeville by any means, is to, you know, making this less of a change for us here because it is three quarters of a mile away. We do yeah. have the signalized intersection. And I, yeah. I really appreciate the information that you've presented to us today because, you know, we hear a lot of it in bits and pieces and there's a lot of, um, you know, misinformation out there, I think. Um, my concern really relates to the fact that we're going to have three active train crossings in the town mm -hmm. of Lakeville now. That right now they exist with freight rail, mm -hmm. where the freight train goes by maybe twice a day um, mm -hmm. at its peak. And so we're going to end up with, is it 14 or 12 trains on that route? The, that's the New Bedford route, right? The New yeah. Bedford route. Yeah, yeah. your freight crossings both on the Middle Lower Secondary and so the, and the yeah. Oh. So, yeah. So, so in total crossings. we'll have one that'll have 12 and the other will have 14 crossings? What? Malvon will only see 13. Yeah. Okay, 13. so Malvon will only see 13. The other two will okay. see, yeah. All right, okay. so yeah, so there will be a lot, yes, and there are so, full crossings, full signal crossings. We went and inspected them yeah, so in August. Weeks ago. Yeah, so we've done a safety assessment <laughs> of those crossings. We call it a, I stand, sorry, um, yes. a diagnostic team review where get the engineers, um, Department of Public Utility is involved with it, the MBTA, Keolis, and we evaluate every aspect of in, in the grade it. crossing. And then we look at what's the, um, the best improvements, upgraded signal equipment, current technologies, make sure all the site distance and previews are appropriate. And vegetation, you had yeah. a lot of vegetation yeah. issues, so yeah. So, yeah. But, and um, sound mitigation for the residents? Yep. <coughs> we're doing, on the overall right now, we're doing um, noise and vibration studies. <coughs> Um, already did that on the New Bedford main line. Okay. Um, so that's, we, we have in our retinue, we have uh, a number of areas where we would be mitigating. Yeah, and that's all part of the supplemental EIR exactly. process is evaluating uh, impact of noise and vibration on abutting property. So we've actually been out there monitoring mm -hmm. ambient sound, where it exists today, mm -hmm. and then modeling what it would be with the the addition of the commuter rail trains and seeing what that vari variation is and seeing where mitigation would be required. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess my, my other question too is, you know, you mentioned that this is the phase one. Is the Stoughton line completely off the table now? No. Or does that mean that this is, this is a payment, or th there's a potential that in by 2030, right. if the Stoughton line still goes in the same, I guess, schedule, that what happens to this line in that event? Do, I mean, we yeah. have upgraded the freight rail then. Does that cut off our need to have this secondary? Well, it's resilience. Um, one of the things that we're doing system-wide throughout the state is trying to create areas where, say, a train breaks down on one line, they can get them out of the way on another one. So. We don't see that as, as a toss-up, but also state of good repair, there's a lot of work that needed to be done here anyway. So we wouldn't have done everything that we're planning on doing there, but we definitely would, we're already doing so, tied yeah, so down. And that, that, that line would always remain for freight. That so would. The freight will stay you know, there, stay there mm -hmm. with a Stoughton Strait built and the commuter rail trains would right. head north, so the freight would and continue. All, and this is both. At that point, mm -hmm. what would this, and maybe you haven't gone out to 2030 on this, but would the service lines be, or the service be back to essentially what it is today, with the trains starting and ending at the new Middleborough station and going to South Station? Yes. Yes, you know, yes that's right. Yep. Okay. That's exactly and that right. would be back to probably somewhere around a 12, 12. Uh, but if well, 2030, the, it could change, though, Mitzi. The, I don't know. Yeah, the service <laughs> volume, though, were up to 26 trains. That number of trains wouldn't change. It would only be that they would 
end at the new Middleborough station, they wouldn't continue down the New Bedford right. corridor. So the service would stay the same in Middleborough. Um, it just wouldn't extend yeah, down the New Bedford forward. Yeah, unless the T does a whole new operations plan, but the, I mean, that's 2030, so it's hard to predict exactly how many trains are gonna run in 2030. But we have pinch points and we have limitations at South Station as well. So is, I think we can pretty much and, assure yeah. that. With those limitations at South Station, I know that's been mentioned in the past, yep. you need to upgrade as you pull into the rail yard of at South Station with the capacity, and yep. that's all just part of what you're gonna be doing regardless, because you need to do it now or with no. additional trains or no. it's only if you've got the Stoughton route going? The Stoughton route would ha ha at full capacity was 40 trains a day. Yeah. We would not have been able to run the 40 trains a day even tomorrow with South Station the way it's currently configured. So the South Station expansion was necessary to get to full capacity on the preferred route. This, we're taking the existing operations and, and their little slots at South Station and using them as they are. Okay. But that's that's a very good question it comes up a lot okay how are you going to do this without south station so in in 12 years in theory we can be back to where we are today in yes. theory in theory yes yeah, everything's in theory i point. guess so. <laughs> it's all in theory too right. to a certain degree yeah. right yeah. yeah well this so is this is um like advancing pretty rapidly where we're expecting <laughs> we're supposed to have revenue service by the end of november 2022 and can i ask do you have any estimate of how much it would cost mm -hmm. a rider from new bedford and fall river well, we, we were toying with that the other day. What zone is it? So you're zone eight in Lakeville. And um, I wish he was here. Uh, Wickford was zone, Rick, I mean, Jim said he did Wickford. He said it was zone, zone 10. 10. Yeah. I'm not sure. I do know the following, that the MBTA is looking at all their zones right now because they do feel there are some inequities. So by the time we get up and running, I'm not sure what the cost will be. Um, and I don't know what zone New Bedford and Fall River will be, but they will be more expensive than coming out of Middleborough. Or okay. I guess, you know, my concern would be if, you know, it's alluding to the parking situation, mm -hmm. if it's going to, I mean, it's $23 round trip to get from Middleborough to South Station right now, along with $4 for parking. So it's yeah. $27 to get up there. If it's going to cost an additional $10 from New Bedford to Fall River, and it's going to take an additional half an hour, I, I just, you know, caution the, the parking lot capacity. I'm glad that you said that there's additional capacity right. in that event um, because I do question, you know, exactly yes. what's going to happen with those I, the riders. I'm the, I'm the poster child for that because I could go to the Freetown station, but I want to go to Taunton because I want to have the option of taking a train that's heading to Fall River or New Bedford. It's not just the zone, it's the convenience. So, yeah, we have to look at that. Um, and, and the T is looking at all of that as well. And the other thing is that, you know, people that regularly commute by the passes, and you do say it that way. You don't have to do the full 23 bucks, which is a lot. I hear you. Uh, Aaron. Who prefers this alternative? <coughs> who prefers this alternative? Yeah. <laughs> alternative? So the preferred alternative remains a Stoughton Straight Electric. This is just phase one. Yep. So remember, we did an, an incredibly comprehensive environmental review and concluded with the Army Corps of Engineers that this was the least environmentally damaging practicable alternative, otherwise known as a lift off. And that remains the case. It, it's a faster ride, it's electric. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the T's wheelhouse right now that is electric, so that's another reason when we did our cost estimate that we had to add some risk in there for that. We don't have facilities to repair electric locomotives, typically <coughs> system-wide, we share equipment. So if you have broken down trains on the Middleborough Lincoln line, we can borrow something from Greenbush. Can't do that with electric locomotives. That's another thing that T's looking at right now. What is our fleet gonna look like? And that's what, a six year study, Rick? Right? So we're looking comprehensively at everything and we need to fit in. So for right now, this is diesel service. It just latches on to what exists. And I can't say it's preferred. We threw it out many years ago because of all the complexities. But we're able to make this work now for a lot less money to at least begin the connection to these two cities. Actually, three. Three gateway cities. Taunton, New Bedford, and Fall River. Okay. Um, I noticed recently that the natural heritage maps changed in the Middleborough yeah. area. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? Well, actually, we're meeting with them next week. Yeah. We yeah, we have regular week. meetings with them, and um, we have a really good person on the team who's working with them. So, like, there's some new dragonflies, <laughs> some other things they're looking at. But what all, I noticed was that the habitat is, is well, that area is no longer considered habitat. 
Yeah. yeah. It's part it's of disturbing. our environmental impact analysis. It will be in there. All of the uh, habitat areas, mapped habitat, wetlands, all of those categories you of environmental uh, protection and resource areas are being evaluated uh, for their presence, their known presence, their found presence. Correct. Our environmental scientists have been up and down the secondary. So, so if they find habitat, they'll rezone it, a, a critical habitat? But my, my yeah. question is, it, it, it used to be mapped habitat for certain species, Correct. and now it's not. So, but so my natural question, heritage is very particular about what you do. I mean, we are working closely with them. I hear you, that it is different. So the you only know what I'm saying is it's, it's no longer habitat, which I obviously is advantageous for you folks if you're trying to put a train through it. Yeah, yeah. we're also trying yeah. to be very they aware. They still do a wildlife assessment. We sure do. All along the corridor. Okay. Uh, mostly land, the box turtle. Land and wildlife. And right. it all gets right. documented in the EIR. Yep. Yeah, but it okay. is mostly the box turtle. And there are critter crossings. We did a thorough analysis, at least in the Southern Triangle. We're doing that now. I found it a little, the timing a little bit suspect. That's why well, I'm We asking. have nothing to do with it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you honestly did. Yeah, well, this is our first meeting with the Clara. They, they established the maps. We applied sure. the maps. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We were trying to find out who deleted it so we could have them delete right. areas of our own. So, so if no one wants to own up to it, maybe you can find the name of how it somehow suspiciously got deleted so we could delete it at the uh, police station yeah. site and save ourselves $60,000. Yeah. Does anybody in the, out in the audience have questions or comments? I'm trying to open it up to the public. You want to just identify yourself for the camera, please? Dick Scott, Rush Farm Road, Lakeville. Um, when the T was proposed for Lakeville originally, um, there was some discussion and then rejection of um, having a flyby from 495 to the parking lot. Oh. And um, at the time, they said the ridership on the Lakeville station wouldn't justify right. um, a fly off of 495. So my question is, in your analysis of ridership, do you have any feel for 495 versus the surface roads of um, 18, 105, 44? Mm -hmm. And the distribution of traffic. Yeah, and just, just so they've done. They're doing traffic studies. Rick, you should. You're probably best equipped. I'm just together. curious. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. So, um, yeah, we're we're in the midst of the traffic study of this whole area right now. We did counts of all the corridors you mentioned, including 495, and then um, had a sense of what's going to the existing station, distributed it to the new station, and. Be, you know what we're finding early is one that you know it's it's less vehicles because the ridership slightly less here, but um, coming right off 495, it's actually a convenient spot with that signalized intersection. Um, we didn't look at any triggers of what would justify a, a sole passage from 495 um, to the uh, new parking lot. Was more can the existing ramp and highway network support what's going there, and uh, and we found that it can. And uh, there's some signal upgrades that 495 will need to do because we're adding a, a fourth leg to it. We're also uh, doing this. The where's that? Come on, Hannah. Um, this road through Chase Chevrolet into it allows for queuing off the roads. So one of the things that is important at the peak period when you get those bursts of people, that they'll be allowed to queue a lot of them up here, so they shouldn't block the intersection. That's the whole. That's where the signalization comes in. Is that, does that, okay, yes. thank yeah. you. Am I allowed another question? Sure. <laughs> um, in this development um, area, we're going to call it a development area for the sake of argument, the, the 40R regs talk a lot about walkability. Yep. So the proposed new station, is there going to be walkability from where people currently could walk, theoretically, to the new proposed station um, in as much as I see people walking now from Middleborough down to Lakeville. I, I'm just curious yeah. if, the, the, if, if walkability is, is. is in that planning. Uh, absolutely, regime. absolutely. I, I don't know what it's going to look like yet because right now it's pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been, the secretary actually has said you need to look at how to make that um, a more pleasant, more walkable uh, 
group between the two. So yeah. yes, to your point. And, and we're looking at um, that walkability both from Route 105 and exactly. from Route 28 on the yeah. other side too, where yeah. um, the resident residential density of Middleborough is to make sure that connection is um, a good one to the station. That's it's definitely a. a MBTA uh, initiative on the stations for bikers, walkers, as well as cars and vehicles. So and, and safety. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can I ask another question? Um, and maybe this is just the um, the conservative question about the state budget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is working. This alternative is working, and we have trains that are coming in from. Fall River and New Bedford, and the total cost is estimated to be two hundred million with the new station and the upgrades. Is that about right for this alternative? The whole project, just this alternative. <laughs> no, we're, we're closer to a billion. So this is a billion. Yeah. And then we're going to spend another three point four billion. No, we're not. On the no. electric no, side, no, no, or no. did I miss that? Well, yeah. Yeah. The the overlap of the Southern Triangle. Yep. Is that stage is for both. both. So what we're building so that, works so that's for. A billion here how much is the electric rail then because I thought that I That's heard that the that was the three, four. Right. right you're already we're building out this piece which we wouldn't be building out till 20 almost 30 so so you're saving the escalation cost there and this is already all you have to do here is electrify no which is adding anything really right it. so <laughs> but but I guess my my, my question is Fine. This is supposed to be the less expensive alternative, right? This is supposed to be sort of an interim fix. But it's really an interim, like painting the lines on the rotary before we get to a potential for a flyover. But I just, you, you, that, that was the original DOT, I, I you know, so it's phase one, phase two. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're doing here is we're saying that we're going to put some service in so that we can take care of the needs. Now, what if your ridership totals show that you really don't have any ridership. I mean, what's happening with the electric line at that point? If you, or they're not, I mean, is there any plan to look at this and do a review of Absolutely. if this is in place, or, or is it a, you know, a done deal to be spending more to kind of move the electric lines into well, existence? Well, we have horizon years, and we also redid, we're doing, uh, they'll be done in November, ridership for the Stoughton Electric, so we're redoing both. Um, the projections are typically extremely conservative, um, and we use mostly surfeit data with CTPS data to try to calculate what they are. And again, they're conservative. You'll have to be reviewing it. You have to. It, it's the thing is that when Lakeville opened, it was immediately over capacity. So I don't expect much different. There is a huge need to move people so, off the road. I guess my question is: so the the fork going to New Bedford and Fall River, mm -hmm. that will never be electrified? No, that's not what I said. No, no, I'm asking the question. Oh, so, so this route is to be electrified unless something the entire happens. Of it. So those All trains then going from New Bedford to Fall River could not take the secondary over no. because they would not be able to do that. So right. any At least redundancy, right if you Correct. say, Resiliency. is right. lost. No, no, you would, no. you would have to have a you know, diesel locomotive from the middle of the It can still run on electric rails? Down. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they so just won't have they yeah. won't attach to the cat now. It would just go slow. They, yeah. Well, they go slower, but they, yeah. they can run on the same rail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the rail yeah. no, is not it. independent of it. It's just exactly. the train itself could not go. It does not for yeah. yeah. either. Yeah. Plus, they have these fancy hybrids now, although those are fabulously expensive. But the technology is changing. And you know, one of the things we said to the core, would you even consider letting us do Stoughton diesel? And all they want is the data. They want to know that we're doing the same thing with greenhouse gas emissions. And we don't have that yet. But every year, we're tier three right now. Where are we? <coughs> tier three two, going to tier, tier four. Tier three, three going to four, based on an EPA directive to clean the particulate matter out of the air, which is why the trains are plugged in at night, the diesel trains. Um, so the tier four is infinitely cleaner than what's running presently. And it could be a little bit tier 16 by the time we get this going, but I don't know. But what I'm saying is that the diesel is getting cleaner and cleaner, and if, if we don't have to do the infrastructure for the electric, which is expensive, and also involves maintenance and training and all this other stuff, if, if we could do this without that, that would be ideal. But that's not on the planning stages right now. Okay. But you're not putting the infrastructure in for the electric. We're not building a catenary. No, nope, but we'll have all the signaling in, 
for yes. if it does go to that? Well, the signaling has to be the speeds that they're going right at yeah. present, so they'll go 79 miles an hour. So, so the differential of what we're building for the, that southern triangle uh, for the diesel, this phase one service, and the electric is only the catenary, which is the catenary to electrify it as poles with wires hanging above the track. Mm -hmm. Then you can use the uh, electric locomotives. Everything else will be um, functional for this phase one diesel service right. and the future electric service. <coughs> okay. Yeah. With positive train control. Electricity generated by burning oil. Ooh, yeah, you know what? Now I said that to the car. <laughs> I did. I said the electricity has to come from something. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Does anybody else have any comments, questions, concerns? I have one. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Can you just make the uh, say your name just Sorry, for the record? Rich Bosmer, just a citizen of Lakeville. Thank you. I know I'm late to the game, but. I hate, I just uh, <laughs> state the obvious. Am I, am I hearing this correctly? We're going to accommodate 886 people a day and it's going to cost them billions? <laughs> so, no. I mean, go to number two. We're at five right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the other way, Mm -hmm. So the one with the ridership. So you wanted yeah, the, the station. You yeah. wanted the station. Okay. okay. Right. So there we are. This, that's how many riders you want to Lakeville, yeah. Middleborough Lakeville today. station today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So how many riders are we expecting from New Bedford to come to Lake? Yeah, well, we're still working those numbers out. The preliminary estimates put them about forty-one percent of projected ridership for Stoughton. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not done until November. So what's the number, though? Yeah, what is that? Like the number of people. Like 200? Uh, 400? 16. Yeah, 16, yeah. 50 um, of the ridership um, for the new stations south of Middleborough. Yeah, Lakeville, yeah, so. those stations are yeah. what they're getting for riders. At, yeah. But yeah. you're subtracting from these guys. We're not counting so, this, right? Counting so that. it's the So the what's the incremental for, ridership expected for bringing in Fall River New Bedford? Yeah, again, I think that's around 1,600. That's around 1,600. So we're expecting increment. another 1,600. So we're doubling. Double. Well, that's why we needed the new coaches and, um, yeah, the capacity. So that's your answer, 1,600 people, a billion plus dollars. Three. Well, that's on the low end of a billion plus. If we start to get into electricity, let's call it five, five billion. Yeah. All to shut down approximately what 800 cars a day on the front door. Well, when you electrify and do the Stoughton alternative, the ridership is much higher. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. than it stops at Back yeah. Bay yeah. Yeah. and has different stops too. Yeah. 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 Yep. But even a million quad, that's mm -hmm. a billion. That seems like a lot. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's investing in 20th century technology. Honestly, I mean, I think it is. all along my 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 issue with this is that first of all it's not local people that are making the decisions but then again that's how state government works and I appreciate that but I think that it, it's a shame that the equal amount of resources meaning a billion dollars can't go toward building infrastructure in Fall River, Taunton, and New Bedford for increasing the jobs and the demand for, for people to work locally. Um, I understand that the commute is a reality of the way that our culture is set up at this point in time but I really wish we could do something to change that. Well, right. Spending a million dollars on a train right. is is kind of a a sad a sad. Uh, well, I think I think state of affairs. You, yeah, the, the cities are working very hard to to build their job prospects. They really are. Um, unfortunately, right now, what you see on Route 24 is everyone going to where the jobs are. Which are not necessarily in the city itself. No, not but, necessarily uh, right. But that's right. I think but, that you know, I think the concern too, you know, is mentioned in the past. Same thing. I mean, calculated six figures. Per just to just to rider. follow up, how did we come to that number of sixty million? No, that's a, a very thorough analysis by the yeah. Central Transportation Planning staff. Yeah. yeah, they have a black box. They call it, or I call it. I don't know how they do it, but it's. Pretty complex, but it's uniform. It's a standard that's applied to uh, all sorts of, of projects, transportation projects. Uh, 
but I do, I really do need to credit the city for their, their working hard. Well, I, I really appreciate all of you coming out because this is very helpful for me to understand the, the, the whole project and the impact it, it may have on Lakeville. Yeah. Um, I think looking at the way that the existing line works and how Again, I'm not necessarily a proponent of the project, but if it's going to happen, I think that it's thought out and it's thorough in, in, in the logistics of how it needs to happen. And I appreciate um, the, the, your time for, for coming and explaining all of that. Um, I think if I could just surmise, our issues are the parking lot. Yep. Um, we, we have an issue with, with the potential of that being um, left for dead, so to speak. Um, the noise mitigation along the route, yep. we, we have some signal, signalized crossing that's going to occur. The, the level of traffic from the trains is going to increase tremendously on, on um, those sections of track in Lakeville that we're, we're concerned, obviously, about that. Um, outside of that, I think that's pretty much our perspective on it. Yep. So I appreciate well, it. And we're happy to come back as, as things progress. Uh, you know, really, <coughs> Lorraine, just give me a call. <laughs> it's always nice to catch up anyway. <laughs> um, but we are. I mean, the team is always ready to come back um, in, in, in whenever you feel it's time for another update. Thank you. Um, we're happy to do it. And I just think, you. you know, yeah. one of the things, if you have any information on, you know, John's point about yeah. the Cape Flyer station, I mean, I think that's a really important aspect that we're looking for as we look to plan yep. development within that sure. area, um, which is something that is somewhat time sensitive in the time. Understood. So we will take that back with us. And we'll also take all this out of your way. <laughs> Let's okay. conduct the rest of your business. Um, before you folks leave, though, I just sure. want to mention that um, we're actually, Rick is going to be back from your office on the 26th. Mm -hmm. He's going to be meeting with us here at the Senior Center at 6.30 on October 26th right. to discuss, in, in particular, the idea of solar canopies at, at that location. Yes. Um, so I just want to let everybody know that. I yeah. appreciate you coming back sure. for that purpose. Well, I made him come tonight, too. <laughs> I just thought, what the heck? <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? If not, I will... Um, Thank you once again for coming, and we'll move on. Once, once you're out of here, we'll move yeah, on. Yeah, right. we'll be as disruptive as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing all this. Thank you. 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 After agenda item number one, um, I think that that was helpful. It was helpful for me to understand the scope of of their plan to uh, waste a billion dollars. <laughs> so, number two, let's review and vote on the special town meeting articles and vote to sign the special town meeting warrant for November thirteenth. So, we have our warrant articles. Um, Why is two on here again? Do you want me to highlight the changes from that's the last not, one? That's not. No, that's just their salaries. Okay. Elected officials have to be done separately from them. Okay. And Aaron, um, we did have town council combine. Yes, uh, okay. The zoning amendment to accessory structures as you requested. Yep. What was Zink's idea? Is he still here? He just left. He just left. Well, uh, Zink had suggested that because if one failed, the other one would be of no use, so we put them in as one. Of course, when Rita had suggested it and told me that Zink had done it, I said, well, I don't care what he thinks. <laughs> we have it the way we have it. Which articles are those? And then when I looked at it, it went, seven and eight now. Seven oh, well, it does make a lot of sense to do it that way. Now it's number 11. <laughs> I hated to admit he was right, but he was right. I didn't hate to admit it. All right, so did anybody have, do, do we want to go through this with more detail, or are we just voting to? Are there any significant changes that aren't wording? Just crappy no. the old word. If there's no changes, I read the last one, and this one isn't highlighted for changes, so. Yeah. No, there's, there's no significant difference. 
We do have, though, in here the uh, Board of Health language that's new, right? For the what we talked about? Yes, town council. The, where, where that, that's yeah. article eight. Okay. Yeah, that's the only new one. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the town okay. council language. Yeah, yeah. And, and the monies that we're going to move around, when do we talk about those? Article 3. Yeah, but when when do we talk about, about them? About what we want to do with them? Oh. The, um, the amounts and what we're doing with them. What Board of Selectmen's meeting are we discussing that? I would say November 1st, because warrant review is on November 8th. Okay, so, so okay, that's that fine. Thursday. Do, do, do we have them Thursday? Next Thursday, next what, Thursday what? we have uh, the solar canopies here. The, the sooner rather than later. So so, sooner, <laughs> rather, sooner rather than later, because what? because the, the that's that, that's not going to talk. Uh, the, the canopies not going to talk a lot. Uh, you know, I mean, whether he's here a half an hour, we'll have time. Right. Yeah. We're going to be here. Let's let's yeah. Let's add, let's add that it to be, it. It could be just you know. If, if you're if you if you can it would be, be ready stage. for it yeah. to have that conversation, we might as well do it because. Yeah. We'll just be ahead of the game. Yeah, like sooner rather than later. Let's see on what she wants me to put on it. Let's see. So yeah, I mean, we we'll, could talk by we'll, phone and you tell me what you want. Right. Well, we'll put suggestions that we talk about. Yeah. But I want to get the projection done. I think we should have a suggestion box. At With Town a shredder <laughs> under it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Second Tuesday of the week. Yes. <laughs> so let's do those in re in, in reader a couple of days before that meeting. You got to show me the changes. On our Suggested on changes. Transfers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I move to put the following articles one through fourteen on the special town meeting warrant. I'll second that. Article one. Okay. No, well, I always keep that language in there, but if you want me to quickly just do a review, I can do that. No, it says here articles are read yeah, into the warrant. Back. So do I read them? No. Therese, uh, Christine will cut and paste. Okay. The articles. articles one through 14. There are 14 warrant articles. Good people of Ron Circle and other Cedar Pond Road town ways best be there if you want your roads plowed this winter um, is the motion. And I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I also move to sign the special town meeting warrant for November 13th, 2017. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Agenda item number three. This is to review and vote to sign a contract for event management with Loon Pond Lodge. I spoke with Lee Smith today, and he is very close. They were going back and how Bill Fuller's attorney and Lee Smith were going back and forth on the proposed language. They're really, um, yeah, so section 2.21 was the one thing with the indemnification in the event that, that the contract was terminated. Under different circumstances, the town may indemnify, it may not. It depends on whether or not, uh, or whether the, the, the events in the pipeline would continue to be uh, Bill Fuller's responsibility or if he was terminated for uh, a reason where we didn't want him to have any further affiliation with us, then that would take on a different role. So I talked through all those permutations with Lee Smith, and he has language that the other attorney had suggested, and he had made some tweaks to it, but they just hadn't connected on, on finalizing that language. So what I'm going to propose is that we vote to uh, accept uh, or I should say vote to sign the contract for the event management subject to a final review by, by me and town council. So that I'll be able to just make sure that Lee is buttoning this up on our behalf and then we can just sign it. That way we don't have to have another meeting on it. Yep. 
I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. Um, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I'll get this thing started. So this is agenda item number four, review and vote to award the bid for the sale of the assessor's office. After what could, what, 27 months, we are nearing the end of our journey. Seven, after 17 years, I think. 17, right. 17 years. Temporary building. Purchased <laughs> for the sake of expanding the Lakeville Library. <laughs> and then became an assessor's office. After a... a yeah. Long and, and uh, winding road of 17 plus years, we put out to bid the assessor's office, and it was adequately um, posted in MLS for the sake of the entire real estate community seeing it. We received bids, these bids. We received five bids ranging from $100,500 to $240,100. We have an attached summary of the bids. The highest bid was to South Coast Redevelopment of New Bedford. Their bid package met all the requirements. Uh, we also have a copy of Town Council's contract for our review. It will be sent to the buyer who needs to fill out the mortgage information and sign. There's a timeline on the transaction. Um, the parties have 10 days to enter into the PS purchase and sales agreement after the selectmen award them the bid. The two parties have 45 days to close after the purchase and sales agreement has been executed by both parties. Town Council has tentatively scheduled the closing for December 5th. We should have the Christmas party there on December 4th. <laughs> 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 okay, so we we have these bids. If we want to talk about them, we can. But um, by and large, South Coast Redevelopment LLC was the high bidder um, by, a, in my opinion, a significant amount. The information is all here. Um, it's engaging in a hard money lender. <clears throat> which is typical of developers um, under these circumstances. So do we, I guess I'll entertain a motion. Or oh, does anybody have any questions for us? I think we can talk a little bit about this before we move anything forward. I was just curious, we've received a deposit yeah. of $1,000 yes. for this. Okay. And then when we sign it, we'll get an additional $23,000. And I assume this flexibility for any reason, December 5th wasn't a good date for the purchaser, you know, if you needed December 7th or... Sure, no, that yeah. doesn't really matter yeah. to us. I mean, we'll, ideally, we'll get everything in advance and we'll sign it in advance so that, yeah. you know, you can facilitate the transaction. It's pretty straightforward. Right. Certified funds. Thank you very much. Right. Indeed. I, I, think, I think it was a... Good bidding process, and uh, he's he's in the we'll call it rehabbing or rebuilding homes, and he's finished one recently in Lakeville, and it came out wonderful. So I'm pleased that South Coast Redevelopment got it. And more importantly, they were the highest bidder. <laughs> no, and I think that the amount that they that they're paying is fair. Yep. For the town. Yep. Um, Absolutely. It's it's one hundred dollars over the assessed value. Not that the assessment is an no, appraisal value. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, the assessed value. Oh, the appraised value is two twenty. No, it's two twenty. That is two forty. Yeah. No, great. And I just have to say, John. You know, I think if, if it was sold, maybe I know you've been frustrated with the process, but I think because of the prices in Lakeville, it's just that I think we ended up getting more as opposed to have sold, having sold it a year ago. I wasn't going to sell it for less, so I'm glad he bid that. <laughs> but eight less than the appraised value? Right. I mean, just as well, no, I'm, I'm happy with the bid. I mean, 
these came through right. after it was listed on MLS? Well, well whether, whether they would have or wouldn't say, have, I don't know. I would yeah. say I don't know. at least three of those people went on the walk through. Yeah. Without being yeah. right. 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 Okay. right. No, it, yeah. it's a great deal. Well, no, I mean, you think good, a good deal for the yeah. town, a good deal for him, because it's. I think it's a great location. It's an old building, but it's a great location, and great. I think he'll do well, and we're Thanks. satisfied with yes. the money. Well, I think the advantage of MLS is to say it was on MLS mm -hmm. because that's the de definitive yes. source of, of real estate information for for anybody that's looking yep. to buy. So. We may not have gotten any bids per se from it, right. but we can at least say that we did our due diligence in terms of projecting yes. out the the, um, the sale. Yep. There may have been those signs. Right. Oh, yard yeah. signs. Yeah. That's when we started getting we're the calls. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, it, yeah, was, it was. It, uh, put put it, it in the central register so it didn't work. I don't know why. So. Did you make the motion, or am I making the motion? You can make it. Make the motion that uh, we day. we award the uh, to the highest bidder, South Coast Redevelopment of New Bedford for two hundred and forty thousand one hundred dollars. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. All right, the, the heat is on. You gotta get that uh, town hall squared away. Oh, we're already on it, right? The heat's on. Take everything in the conference room and throw it away. <laughs> okay, do we have any old business? Do you want me to update the whole board? Sure. I, I would guess call it old business. The site plan for the new police station um, was presented last night to the building committee from the architect. They shifted, I don't know, John, if you can see it, I only have one copy. They shifted the entrance over to here, you know, per request of, you know, the fire chief. Um, and then I got an email this afternoon from Kenny, maybe 10 feet more, he's doing the water line extension, but they are ready to go to Mass um, DOT to get the curb kind of great. The, so, the, wa the water line, We've hired the contractor to to design the placement of it. Yes. When do we put the water line in? And did they? And that's one question. The second question is, have they been in contact with Tom, water department? Yes, they have. Okay. Yeah, they've had the meetings. Uh, one one difference is the estimate coming through to this side of the property was much higher. So the building committee last night felt the water is going to be going in this side of the building. It put the estimate of we're up to like three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So <laughs> never in their rooms. Well, the dam been built so they can stop escalating the cost. Well, you'll see <laughs> if you, you make part of it now, and then yeah. you know later when we electrify the police station, yeah. then uh, yes, right, <laughs> we'll yeah. have already saved the money. But John's question. Pretty much, they had that discussion last night. You pretty much could do it any time, um, but because you don't need the water until the building almost opens. Right, opens. right, uh, right. So I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. That. I wanted to make sure that we don't do something that is the opposite of what Taunton mm -hmm. Water would like. Now we can talk to them, take in all their comments, but I want to make sure that someone has done that. They, they did mention to Ken uh, in his email today, I think they would like some stubs along the way, mm -hmm. so if anyone up to where it ends wants to tie in, so that discussion will probably uh, be up to the and, and, and and Right, right, and the, my, my first question is, if, if Taunton wants those, we, I think they can mitigate part of the cost. We sold them the water tower. If they're going to pick up new customers, mm -hmm. We're happy to make sure they're put in, but they should pay for it. Yeah, that. the steps I know for when they ran the water line from Elders Pond up to the town hall, it was five hundred dollars. Oh, to, the, the, or a huge that, Italian. The, it's that's much fine. cheaper that's to fine. do it then. No, that's fine. I like that this proposed layout has conceptual drainage areas. For any bad ideas that people have, they can just drain them away to these areas where they can be held. 
in perpetuity. The, is there Aaron or, or Nate, who's in attendance, is there any escalation beyond the the water that and I'm not talking ten thousand dollars worth of escalation. Is there any significant escalation that we need to address as the selectman group? Well, last night they did present um, the cost estimators came back. The project architect used two different cost escalators and um, escalators the, exactly. Right? <laughs> an escalator. Put escalator in the um, so one story building. <laughs> we had to cut, make the cuts of about three hundred thousand in yeah. um, factoring in uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so of the water. That's how much we have in water betterments to go towards the water line. That was not. Right, you have 250, two fifty, and you're thinking it's going to be three hundred. No, we needed to cut another three hundred from the project. So. Um, it was, it was about, it was about a half a million dollars board, yeah. over what they, what the they had originally proposed. No, not for the water. No, no. The no. Oh, oh, okay. The whole okay. Whole no. So the water's. I get that. Yeah. So there was a a three to five hundred thousand dollar escalation. Yeah, but but, over, but I thought we were quoting yeah, like even over our ten percent. Well, they even at the five hundred thousand or so over, they had reduced our ten percent contingency to seven and a half percent, which would have really made the escalation more like three quarters of a million. So you see what I mean? They they dropped right, the contingency right. down. Right. Yeah, they're playing with the numbers. Right. Did, did, didn't they? Didn't they say that we're doing the quoting after the holidays, but yet we're doing it before? No, no, we're going no. no. And like yeah. he said, I, I didn't go to the meeting last night, so Nate actually chaired it. For yeah, the, these are just uh, building estimates prior to going out to bid, so we can get some numbers, make sure we're building the right building, and that the bids are actually going to come in where we budgeted for. So we're prepared to go out to bid. It's going to be early January. Okay. Yeah. So the things that the committee cut out last night, can, depending on where the bids come in, can be added back in. It's just right. So what, what they did was they went through a process of just tightening up on the design for the sake of anticipating a higher cost. Mm -hmm. But if the bids come in reasonable, then they can factor back in those those aspects to the to the design. Using the contingency money already. So what exactly did they cut out? Thank you, Mr. Oh, I don't. I don't have it in front because of me. Because it's right. one of those like you know. <laughs> two, two items. Yeah. Give us two of the big aesthetic. one. One big so item. Of, right. So they're aesthetic. Yeah. One big item or two big items. Some, some were aesthetic. Some were not. A hundred thousand so, was the filing system. No. <laughs> the waiver so, still there? <laughs> yeah, still there. So what we did is right. we, so looked the, <laughs> we looked at the we looked at the stuff that we could easily do after without pulling stuff apart. Okay. You know, so it was. You know, well, took some core, sheet rock off yeah. the inside of the, uh, you know, the accessory building. We could do that after, no problem, if the funds became available. There was small stuff. I really didn't want to see the cupolas go, but I don't believe they're going to be $50,000 for the two of them either. So it's something that we probably can add, add back in. Um, the handicap automatic door openers were taken out, but the conduit will be in place to put them in if we have to. Yeah, they don't put them in on the weekend. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't have to have those in. They're not, they're not required. It's a good idea to have them, but it's $15,000. So, you know, as we were trying to shave off $15,000 on an $8 million and, and project. And why, why, why are we shaving prior to the bidding process? Are we confident that it's going to be too high? I, I was getting the feeling that it was going to go the other way. We were waiting after the first of the year because we thought the bids people would want to book work after the first of the year. So there seemed to have been, I thought, a confidence that the bids would come in equal to a less than, but we're already shaving things prior to the bidding process. And yeah, I don't like the sounds of it either. I don't like but the sounds I, of it. But that. I think that it's a necessary evil because if you go out to bid and they come in higher than what's budgeted, you don't have the option at that point to, to reduce it. So okay. you have a couple of choices. You can either leave them off and use them as change orders to put them back in if, if in fact, the bids come in lower, or you can do add alternates. But what we learned last night about add alternates 
is you had to um, prioritize those ad alternates. So wow. let's say the automatic the door openers. You know, you might say that that was one or. Uh, vinyl siding on the accessory structure was another option that we declined taking that off. But you'd have to list them right out, and the more you it, put there, the it, more It's almost incomprehensible to me that we build an $8 million building and we can't put automatic door openers for the right. handicap right. when you have them in the senior center right, right. here. Right. But it's it's incomprehensible that it's $8 million. Dollars. But, John, one of the driving factors with these estimators, they're going by the market right now. Contractors are so busy right now. People are paying three Good, times. Good, then we're happy to wait until it gets to be a seven to million roof. dollar building. They're, sure, they're tripling the cost of the roof because that's what contractors are getting right now. But when we go out to bid after the holidays, they're going to be looking for work. Again. I but am they, not. I am not going back to anyone to ask them for more than eight million dollars. And if we start adding sheetrock to the operational budget later on. I'd be pretty damn disappointed, but we'll we'll let it fly. I, I get the I get the thing of taking it off, so you can always add it in later. But I don't like the feeling of it right out of the gun. No, I don't. I don't really no. care for the. You, you really don't have any control over it. No, though. no right. I mean, it's right. unfortunate, but you kind of are. It's market driven, and Nate and I talked about this today. That if if the market is such that the contractors are getting top dollar for their services and you bid into that, you're in trouble. Now, assuming you're timing the market right, hopefully we hit it right when there's a lull and we get the advantage of that. But you might not. Right. You know? Right. There doesn't seem to be any lull in builders being less busy for the next six months to a year. Right. Just the opposite. Are pretty full. Just the opposite is yeah. happening. Okay. We'll see where that goes, but it's not going to be fun. But we'll see. Well, see what it is. I mean, I guess what you guys are really looking at is how to take off the accessories more than how to, I mean, I suppose, what happens if the bid comes back and it's $9 million is like our lowest bid? Can you at that point go back and look at the design and cut out a thousand square feet or, you know, something yeah, in order to? I mean, I know you probably have to redo the process then, and you then. You do, and you lose a whole year. So, I mean, are we? Are we too you get close a smaller, to the, you get a smaller building for more money. Yeah, right. And square footage you can't get back. That's the last thing. Right. 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 It, it, it is right. such Which a is horrible process. To. It's, well, I love the story, though. It's never cheaper than it is today, so let's just spend it. There you go. Right. That was how we started out this meeting. That's how we started. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. A billion today is... No, but if you, right, if you spend it now, you're saving tomorrow. the escalation costs. <laughs> there you, you don't go. save anything. Right. You're just exactly. spending exactly. money. Exactly. Value exactly. Money. It's not their money. What do they care? Right? They contribute that much of it. Okay. Yeah. It is funny though, the whole process is, is unlike anything. It makes no sense. Crafted by our state government for the benefit of contractors. So which is fine. I mean that's they're a special interest group. So Aaron as the chairman of the group, don't miss any more meetings because they <laughs> reduced <laughs> the attachments to the building. The handicap attachments. Yeah. I, I don't like that. I really Rid don't. Ridiculous. Right. We're going to have the width of the doors, the, the bathrooms are right, everything's right, and you can't friggin' push the button to open the door. Give me a break. Okay. Enough well, said. That, if that's the selectman's feeling, I don't think that there's a real <laughs> An $8 million dollar building and the guy can't get in yeah. I mean, the building. Holy crap. I wouldn't take it out by any means. I think that it's not a good, like, that's not a good cut in my opinion, but that's just. Listen, you guys aren't on the book. No, I know, I that's know we're not saying. on it, but you well, give me bad vibes. That's why we can just vibes. say whatever we want. Sure, right, right. <laughs> Let us talk. Back, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take anything. Okay, what else do we have for old business? Fundraise. Fundraise. <laughs> Is there, did I miss this, um, <laughs> this nomination? Or is this old, or did he, this person lose this? He lost so his appointment okay. for him. All right, I just wasn't sure if that was something that was... Yeah, I just didn't remember. What what committee is that? CBA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are they yeah. going? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
Ms. Reed. What, what in particular did he need that for? He went to get sworn in, and the town clerk wouldn't swear him in without it. I see. Because I don't think I have any of those. I was throwing them away, but, but I started keep. I started keeping them. Once I found out I couldn't, get, where's my paper? Where's my paper? Swear myself into everything. Actually, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the town clerk all of your appointment yes. forms to Safe. hold. Yep. Set up a file. Do we have any new business? Hearing none. Any other business? No, other than next week's meeting, make it fill full, fuller, maybe than just the warrant article dollars. Uh, I'm not. I mean, Aaron's the chairman, but we're, we're only going to be dealing with canopies a half hour. The warrant might take us a while. So I can throw some quick things on. Yeah, do, uh, just, just my first. suggestion. Just my suggestion. Ma ma okay certainly it make it an hour time. plus I meeting. I think that this length is perfect. Mm -hmm. So okay. if we can go an hour and a half, yep. two hours tops, yep. Yep. Okay. that's good yep. with me. Yep. Perfect. We don't bother having a meeting. John's Three point, meet. it doesn't make any sense to, to do it. 45 minutes or, or an hour, we might as well uh, right. get ahead of it because it's yeah, haven't you just makes it easier. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's he has allergies or something. Yeah, yeah they've got allergies. I don't even know where they came from. Next to me. Is there any other business other than Mitzi's <laughs> allergies that may probably come before the meeting? No. Anything? All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone.